six things that you should know before buying the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 or the Note 20 Ultra. I got an early look at them and I'm super excited to share the details with you. Also, at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a bonus section on the Tab S7 and S7 Plus because I know a lot of you are super interested in that. And I'm gonna have a full review and camera comparisons coming of the Note 20 and the Note 20 Ultra. So this would be a great time to let me know in the comment section below what phones you wanna see the camera comparison with. I'm thinking definitely S20 Ultra since this had an interesting camera setup and issues, which we'll address in this video. Dude, I'm so freaking amped about this. We gotta just dive in. First thing you should know is that there are many differences between the Note 20 and the Note 20 Ultra. So the main reason why they're different is because of the positioning in the market. So the Note 20 Ultra, as Samsung says, is positioned towards the Note Loyalist, whereas the regular Note 20 is positioned towards giving people a more accessible Note experience. Dude, I'm so hyped right now, I'm trying to contain it, but so much to share with you. So that basically means that the Note 20 Ultra is going to be not only more expensive, but also more feature packed, and the Note 20 is going to be less expensive and therefore less feature packed. So uh, they're both available for the same pre-order date, which is the day after this video is getting posted. But if you pre-order the Note 20 Ultra, you'll get an $150 gift card. Whereas if you pre-order the regular Note 20, you will get only an $100 gift card. Also, the Note 20 is better in terms of colors, in my opinion. They both have the same less fingerprint prone finish, but the Note 20 comes in mystic green, mystic bronze, and mystic gray. Whereas the Ultra comes in mystic black, mystic white, and mystic bronze. So I feel like Samsung always gives the Ultra less fun colors. Like, do you remember this color on the S20 Ultra? Why? Why can't we get the fun ones too, you know? Some of us want the best of the best, but also fun colors. That said though, I am in love with the Mystic Bronze. I think that it looks super elegant and clean. So this year, if you're into that color, I don't think it will matter that there aren't other color options. So that's the first difference to note. And then throughout the video, there's gonna be a bunch of other ones that coincide with the things to know before buying it. And another area where we see this big difference is in the display. There are three major differences. The Note 20 has a flat 60 hertz, 6.7 inch display. And the Note 20 Ultra has a curved dynamic 120 hertz, 6.9 inch display. So the smallest difference here is actually the screen difference in my opinion, but the thing that's going to create the biggest difference in user experience is probably refresh rate and then curved or not curved. So I personally prefer flat displays because although they don't look as aesthetically pleasing, I find that they're a lot more durable and there also are less palm rejection issues. And I prefer fast refresh rate display. So by no means is 60 Hertz bad, but if I have the option to get a higher refresh rate screen, it makes everything feel fast and smooth. So in a weird way, it's kind of like pick your poison because I can't have both a flat display and a high refresh rate display. I have to either have a curved high refresh rate display or a flat 60 Hertz display. But I'm sure that both displays will overall be great. That's definitely something I'm going to test, but it is a little disappointing that the Note 20 does not have a faster refresh rate display because it is in that higher price bracket. It would have been nice to see at least 90 Hertz. Um, and the dynamic 120 Hertz on the Note 20 Ultra means that the refresh rate will change depending on what you're doing. So if you're like reading a book, it will obviously be a lot lower than if you're playing a game. So only time will tell. I'll let you know in the full review what I think about that. But I, I am amped that they both do get brighter than past generations. So for outdoor visibility, that's definitely going to be a major win. And then we have the camera. And this is where it really gets interesting because if you remember, I was one of the first people to make a video on the S20 Ultra in a camera comparison. And since I was one of the first people to post that video, People were not stoked about my results because I went in with extremely high expectations. And then I was let down by a lot of the images because the S20 Ultra had some focus issues. A lot of the photos look soft. The 108 megapixel sensor didn't do what I thought it was going to. And I was not stoked about it. And then a lot of people's results came out similar to mine and it was like a known issue. Uh, so it seems like Samsung may have fixed that. They added a laser autofocus sensor to the Note 20 Ultra, which they said will provide faster and more reliable focus. So I am cautiously optimistic and cautiously hopeful that this will be the fix and I will have a full camera comparison. So be sure to subscribe if you want to see that. Um, but the other differences between the Note 20 and the Note 20 Ultra are pretty significant as well. So the Note 20 has a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 12 megapixel primary, and a 64 megapixel telephoto, which can give you three times optical zoom. Whereas the Note 20 Ultra has a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 108 megapixel primary, and then a five times optical telephoto lens. 
And interestingly enough, both phones use their highest megapixel lens to take 8K video. So if you're gonna be taking a lot of 8K video, which I don't know why you would be, but if you were, you would get a much tighter 8K video on the Note 20 because it's using its telephoto lens. So you can't get nearly as much in the frame standing in that same position. So that is a bit of a bummer. So if you're gonna be taking a lot of 8K video, the Note 20 Ultra is probably gonna be the phone for you. But of course, camera comparisons coming very soon. Uh, I'm very stoked about the laser autofocus though, and Samsung said in the briefing that for the S lineup, they often focus more on the photo side, but for the Note lineup, they focus more on the video side. So it does make sense to me that they would include that laser autofocus sensor because that will help a lot with video. So again, hopeful, we'll keep you posted on that. And while I'm super amped about the camera, that's not the feature that I think most people know the Note for. The feature that most people know the Note for is the S Pen and productivity as a whole. And there have been a bunch of small improvements here that will probably make the overall experience much better. And then some other features that maybe aren't incredibly useful, but I guess I'm kind of glad that they're here because maybe they'll be useful one day. One of the features that falls into that latter category is air actions. And it's the ability to control your device from across the room. So that may be really useful for some people right now, but I found a personal experience that I'm not a huge fan of gestures from across the room but I'm glad that Samsung is continuing to innovate on that because it could eventually one day get useful. It's just not useful for me personally in the present. Feature that is useful for me, like in the present right now, is lower latency with the S Pen. So there's now nine milliseconds latency, which is extremely exciting. And note taking as a whole is just better this year. So you now have Samsung Live Sync, which basically will sync your notes throughout the Samsung Note app on multiple devices. So if you own multiple Samsung devices, that's a feature that you'll be able to reap the benefits of. And they've also uh, refined the folder structure a little bit. So you get more of like a PC style folder structure to make your notes more organized and convenient to find. They're continuing their partnership with Microsoft actually, which will mean that you're going to get like a suite of integrations that are Samsung device specific, which is also exciting. And they're also this year focusing on ultra wideband tech. So that's exciting for the future, but I don't think it's something that will hugely affect you now. The two use cases that they mentioned were digital keys. So having your phone act as your key for things, which I'm a little bit mixed on because if your key is your way to get into your car, your home, and it's also your phone, like, that feels like a recipe for disaster a little bit, but um, the point to share feels like a really strong feature and that's the ability to like point your device at someone else's device and share the files directly with them. So that's cool. The partnership with Microsoft though definitely has me really excited, not just for the note taking features, but also for uh, the gaming features. This phone now has the ability to play over a hundred Xbox games and you can even connect a Bluetooth controller. So that is definitely really exciting to see. And I think a lot of gamers will be stoked about that. And then you may be wondering, well, which phone should I get if I want a game and uh, multitask and stuff? Like which one has better battery life? And I kind of have an answer for you. So on paper, the Note 20 Ultra has a 4,500 million power battery, whereas the Note 20 has a 4,300 million power battery. But before you jump to conclusions and think, all right, Note 20 Ultra is the one, there are three things that we have to consider. First is that 200 million powers is not like a major difference. The second is that uh, the Note 20 Ultra has a slightly larger display, 0.2 inches bigger. And then the third reason is that it also has a faster refresh rate display. So those two factors could end up being a lot more demanding on the battery than the 60 Hertz display on the Note 20. So I think that the Note 20 Ultra definitely will not have better battery life. It actually may have worse. And I'll keep you posted on that in the full review for sure with multiple different types of usage. But that's like the general idea right now. Also, I think what's really important to note in this video, no pun intended, is that the Note 20 and the Note 20 Ultra aren't the only new products coming out from Samsung. They also released the Tab S7 and S7 Plus, and they look sweet. So they have an 11 inch and a 12.4 inch display, 120 Hertz on both of them, and a refined keyboard with 12 function keys, a delete key, and a larger trackpad. And I'm stoked about these. So you should definitely let me know if you wanna see a full video on them because I, I would love to make it to be honest. If you wanna see my thoughts on the S20 Ultra because I talked a lot about that camera in this video, you should click right here for a mystery video, click right here and be sure to subscribe for camera comparisons, full reviews and other content coming very soon. Thank you so much for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.